Um, basically, uh, well, I'm Canadian, but my parents are originally from Syria. And uh, in my childhood, we lived in Damascus between the age when I was like between 12 and 16. And the city was so wild. It was such a culture shock. And so it, the, the, how, what Damascus was and what it is now it never left me mm -hmm. as a person. And then, um, for a long, a long time ago, I, I was a few years ago. Well, back in 2005, I was traveling throughout the Middle East for my first film for Sabah and uh, called back home and my father was not happy that I was traveling by myself with this movie and he said, you know, whatever happens to you, don't go missing, don't make me come after you. And I thought, ooh, that's a really great idea. This was like 2005. So, and, and, then, and then just like that, the, this, the, the, this character came into my head and refused to leave and I became unhinged and obsessed. It was crazy. I wrote Cairo time mm -hmm. and this one at the same time and so when we were shooting in Cairo I was like Sid I've got this script here you go <laughs> say yes <laughs> now that I have you in my possession please say yes grab him more so I, I wrote Cairo time for him okay. and um, and I wrote this one for him as well and and the reason why I just adore him so much and I'm so in awe of him as an actor is because to me he's the quintessential Arab man you know there's something very masculine about him mm -hmm. he's he his eyes are so expressive and beautiful like he just kind of has you in his like he just walks into a room and commands respect mm -hmm. and so for me I saw that in his performances you know prior and I just thought you know I've I've got to I've got to get him in Cairo time, and then once you know he was in Cairo time, I was like you know I just I just was like you have to do this, and so for me uh, I always and I, and I, I've heard other directors say that this is this is not a good idea to write with someone in mind because sometimes they they'll say no mm -hmm. like no I'm busy or no this is not not happening, but I've been lucky because I wrote you know Cairo time for Patricia and I wrote. Mm -hmm. um, you know these roles for Alexander, and I really wanted Josh in, in in this movie. And you know, I met Marissa very fleetingly, and I was like, "Oh my God, I need to work with you." And so it just kind of worked out miraculously. So I think it's it's I've as a filmmaker, I've never been a heavy-handed one. Mm -hmm. I I trust my audience, mm -hmm. right? Like I just you have to, mm -hmm. you have to respect them and trust them and give them something that's entertaining, but at the same time. The thing with me is, I, I it, my formula is quite simple. I get obsessed with character, and it's always like an or seemingly maybe like in, especially in this kind of movie, it, in this story, a seemingly ordinary person mm -hmm. caught up in an extraordinary situation. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the heart is this character, and I knew that sometimes like directors like to do somersaults. Mm -hmm. I I don't like to show. I, I don't feel. If I show off, I'm doing my story, my little baby, a disservice. And so I will not ever sell my story out. And I guess when I when I say that, what I mean is, I I'm not as a director, and I and sometimes I've been um, criticized for this. Mm -hmm. I don't show off. I don't have excessive violence. Mm -hmm. I don't have nudity. I don't I don't. And it's not because I'm conservative. I'm not. But I. I do what I feel is right for the story. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, I didn't feel like I needed to, you know, show limbs being, you know, close up on that. You know, mm -hmm. I, I didn't feel like I needed to do that because it, the tone wasn't right. Like for me, it was this character and this is a story and I, I just, it's kind of like my thing as a director. I, on the surface, the trailer, there's like a lot of action in it. It's like, you know, I had to really fight that this movie be a slow burn. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it's a, this character, it's like he's overwhelmed and it's all seen through his point of view. And so the first 30 minutes, it's it's not that it's slow and languid like Kyra time, but it, it's it's told from his point of view and everything is confusing. Mm -hmm. and, and this world, Syria, mm -hmm. is very murky and you don't know who to trust. Mm -hmm. You don't know who to, who to, who can can help you you don't know who to listen to mm -hmm. and and this is all told from this person's point of view mm -hmm. and so I just tried to really honor that and 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 I think the thing that women have is they have this intuition 
and this gut feeling and this gut reaction and and for me it's never proven I, I've never regretted not listening to my gut that's and right. I think that's what I tried to bring to this movie because for years and years and years so many find like so just people people and I don't blame them because I understand I understand I understand that side of it but Often I, I was told, you got to put more in there. you got to put more exposition in there. We know you don't like exposition, but you have to explain what this country is like. And I just kept saying, you know, no. You can't, like, I, the, you can't. I think I can do a better job if I just sprinkle a little bit mm -hmm. and then have the audience go, that's really fast. I'm going to go and Google. I'm going to go and find out this information myself okay. and so the best thing I can do is show this very universal personal story about mm -hmm. this father and his desperate search for his daughter and it's in Syria and it's in Damascus and then let you know let them go off after the movie's over and you know read up on that mm -hmm. but I'm not a documentary filmmaker and I'm not an expert on the, on the region I'm not like Robert